All right, let's talk about vaccines. It's been an arduous and honestly tough 18, 20 months for India and the world. In terms of vaccinations, we won the first off the block. It was in the UK. We started our vaccinations in January 2021. Several nations around the world had begun vaccinating for two or three months. The first few months saw a choke in supplies. We prioritized healthcare workers and then the elderly. And it took time to get enough of the population vaccinated so that people could get back to work. In the middle of this, we were hit by a vicious second wave. What has this journey been like? And especially now when we're so close to the 100 crore mark, my colleague Ruchi Bhatia has this special report. India is closing in on the vaccine century, a momentous mark of 100 crore doses, making it the second country after China to hit the milestone. It all began on 16 January when the first jabs were given to the healthcare and frontline workers. And then, nearly six months later, on 21st June, the universalization of the vaccination program began, wherein the drive was ramped up through availability of more vaccines, advanced visibility of vaccination to states, and streamlining of the vaccine supply chain. It took India 278 days to reach this 100 crore mark. But the journey hasn't been an easy one. In fact, it has been the one faced with supply bottlenecks, logistical challenges and a fair amount of vaccine hesitancy. Add to that the deadly second wave that crippled the entire healthcare system. Yet, India has done what globally other countries are aspiring to do. This 100 crore mark is even more special as India, the vaccine maker of the world, relied on its homegrown vaccines, Covaxin and Covishield. Not only that, the experience of the technological platform Covin also helped in building digital infrastructure for public healthcare system. With 100 crore vaccine milestone done, the job is only half done. The road ahead also has a steep climb. Only 30% of the entire adult population has received both doses. The government now needs to focus on those who are due for their second dose and fully vaccinate the entire adult population by the year end, which means as many as 90 crore doses will have to be administered over the next two months. Besides this, vaccination for children will be another big frontier to conquer. Experts say identification of areas where vaccination rates are low and greater community engagement can help push this tricky last mile. COVID-19 had upended all aspects of our lives. But the 100 crore vaccination mark, coupled with a decline in active COVID cases, have once again energized the Indian economy. And that is why experts say for the country to regain its status of the fastest growing economy in the world, it has to double down its efforts to push harder in this last mile. Ruchi Bhatia, ET Now, New Delhi. N.K. Arora, Chair, COVID Subcommittee of Entagi, on the show with us this evening. Uh, Dr. Chandrakant uh, Lahedia speaking with us uh, today, a top epidemiologist, and Dr. Sunila Garg, member of the COVID-19 India Task Force, also with us on the show. Welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Dr. Arora, I'm happy to speak to you on a day when we're on the verge of 100 crore vaccinations. We've had so many conversations in the past 18, 20 months, and a lot of them have been about how will we reach a target of vaccinating the entire adult population? Will we have enough vaccines? Vaccines is our only weapon. Give us perspective today. When we say 100 crore jabs have been given out, how far are we still from the universal adult coverage that we would be aspiring to? So Thank you, Tamanna, uh, for inviting. It's such a nice uh, uh, day talking to you after a long time. Um, I, I remember somewhere in January and of February when we spoke and uh, one could sense a deep uh, kind of ambivalence or uh, not confident that India would be able to do anything uh, worthwhile and it would take at least three to five years. And I'm sure many of us remember those uh, uh, kind of uh, words from several quarters. Uh, 
but I must tell you that journey started not on 16th January 2021. The January started in February, March 2020, when after the first case in 30th January uh, was detected. Right then, a roadmap was mapped out. It was very clear that vaccine will be the only savior along with all other things which we are talking about. And the overarching uh, framework which was thought through was Aap Nirbharta, vaccine Aap Nirbharta, because it became very clear even at that time that for simple drugs, people were not ready to, uh, countries were not ready to help each other. Uh, while we went out uh, with this whole philosophy of Vasudev Kutambam. And I must tell you, there were eight or 10 steps which have been taken in last one year. The first thing was that India is the biggest vaccine manufacturer so far. And most of our times technology brought from outside and we manufactured. So a lot of infrastructure was created in last 30 years or so. But we were never developer of the vaccine, but it was decided at the highest level that now we have to become a nation of vaccine developer also. So a transformative eco change in science and technology was brought in and a proactive marriage between academics and industry, both nationally and internationally was done because that was the only way to see that products are available at the earliest possible. The second thing is that while this was being done, infrastructure for evaluating vaccines, like creating new labs with very specialized things and creating clinical trial sites was also done right in April it was started. The rollout plan for vaccine started in June and July. By the end of July, the whole operational manual for vaccine centers, where they will be located, how many people this was prepared. COVID, I, I think this has been the highlight and the way shows that how IT can really transform uh, a, a such a mega plan, a, a program into feasibility, a realm of feasibility. Who would have managed that giving 100 crore doses, how to keep a track of each one? Now we have a, vac a, a platform which not only tracks the supply chain yeah. for vaccine, but also the beneficiary tracking. And uh, we also knew that vaccine safety will be something which is going to be of major concern for anybody and everybody. So vaccine surveillance system was strengthened and another very important component. And sure. that is why today you saw that vaccine hesitancy is transformed into vaccine eagerness and encourage, um, excitement on vaccine. As, as contrast to many of the developed country where after 50, 60%, they have been giving incentive. While here we are, we are nearing 80% of our adult population and almost 30% yeah. of the adult population is completely. So we use the experience of last 20, 30 years for polio program, measles program to develop a proactive 360 degree approach for handling uh, social, uh, vaccine hesitancy. And that is why, yeah. and I'm a, No, no, no I'm doubt, no doubt. It has been a, no doubt. It has been a massive, absolutely, sir. Absolutely. No doubt it has been a massive effort. It has been a joint effort from several quarters and it has been one of trial and error. I mean, initially, and let me get Dr. Chandrakan Lahedia here. Initially, many people were asking that was it a wise move to go between Jan and Feb with only a small targeted population where we uh, targeted healthcare workers and then above 65 and then we allowed everyone else to get vaccinated. And the first few months, we all remember, you know, logging on that COVID app in the desperate hope that we would get a slot. All of those hiccups were there. Then changing the way that these uh, vaccinations were logged, so even those with no social media access can go out and do it. So a lot of trial and error and then understanding where we were going wrong and coming back on the path, that has taken place as well, isn't it? So... Uh Achieving 100 crore shots is definitely something, a major milestone in which all of us should commemorate, celebrate. This is an outcome of uh, the hard work of policymakers, but also of those frontline vaccinators who have been to those facilities, who sometimes have worked for long hours to deliver those vaccines. Yes. So this is something which we should commemorate. 
Having said that, I would also say that uh, while delivering such vaccines to a, such a large scale to 100 crore uh, shots or uh, targeting 1.88 uh, billion shots, we should be looking backward and also forward. We should be learning lessons from what had happened. In my opinion, it is of limited value that uh, how what were the failures there. But what is more important that today in mid of October when we are talking, India has far more vaccine supply than the demand. And this is really assuring. Of course, we can argue that this situation should have uh, arrived a little earlier. We could have achieved this step a little earlier. But we should derive lessons for future ahead. And the challenge for us, we should be mindful that we have achieved 100, 100 crore shots, but we have 30% of population which is adult population which is fully vaccinated and 44% or 45% which is single shot. So we have two fold of challenges. One, that uh, the 24% of the adult population which is yet to receive their first shot should be brought to the system. Then those 30 uh, those beyond 30% who are waiting for their second shot, we should make sure that they return on the for the their second shot on the time. And both of those are not given. It is not given that somebody, someone who has received first shot will return for second shot. So government need to take step for that. Similarly, the challenge ahead is 24% uh, of adult population, which translates to something like 22 crore. And that's a big number. So uh, there had to be a proactive effort to tackle vaccine hesitancy, understand what are the challenges. So celeb let's celebrate, let's celebrate, commemorate, and congratulate each one of us, especially the frontline workers but be mindful of the challenge ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And on, on what you've said about frontline workers, no doubt they put themselves out there for hours in the initial days. It was very, very difficult. Dr. Sunila Garg, your comments on the journey before we move on to some of those challenges that Dr. Laharia spoke about, because I think we should take a moment to pause and understand where we've reached and how tough it seemed when it wasn't sure if the supply would come on board, the whole debate about whether enough orders were given in time to Serum Institute of India, whether we had stockpiled enough, um, why didn't we just make enough vaccine right from the start, why were we exporting when we needed it, all of those hiccups were there along the way, wasn't it? Yeah, thank you, Tamanna, first of all, for having me on the show. Number one, I'll say it's indeed a momentous occasion. But let me tell you, it was not a cakewalk. It was indeed, you know, full of challenges, as India is full of diversities. The terrains are so difficult across the country. They're so different. And then on top of it, you know, we do have, you know, uh, different kinds of population across. And as you rightly mentioned, and Dr. Arora mentioned in the beginning, you know, we started with, you know, not only in January, we started much before. In fact, almost, you know, eight to 10 months before. And that's where we were, you know, kind of, you know, prepared with regard to vaccination. I'll say that, you know, I participated in different media shows. All the time, you know, it was a challenge that, you know, whether the vaccines will be there or not. But, you know, at all the times I was very positive that the supplies are going to be there. And that's how we have made 200, uh, almost we are making 200 crore mark and tomorrow we'll be making it. But uh, you see, we have to address gender-based issues. We have to, you know, look at the second dose of the vaccination. And, you know, another part is regularly we have to address, you know, time and again, vaccine hesitancy, which is very, very important part of the whole process. So that's where we need to go steadily. And we need to be, you know, kind of consistent in our approach. And I'll say that it is indeed a very, very important day today that uh, I'm speaking to you, uh, particularly on this show. And on the eve of, I'll say, when we are going to be 100 crores. Yeah, it's a big day, no doubt. Now, uh, Dr. N.K. Arora, uh, before we got on to this show, I was looking at some reports coming in from the United Kingdom. And I wanted to, to get your view in that context. The United Kingdom, as we all know, was the first nation of the block to vaccinate before anyone else. Um, they uh, targeted their most elderly because they have a relatively large elderly population. And now they're reporting, um, again, their ICUs filling up some of their debts coming in. Is this a matter of concern, considering that they were the first nation to start vaccinating, even a nation like Israel, that covered a large number of its population fairly earlier, is now having to resort to booster shots? What does this tell us for the way ahead? Oh, um, 
this issue keeps on coming that if something is happening in uh, UK or Israel or USA, uh, how what what is learning for us? And uh, this whole issue of boosters or additional doses are to be understood. And same is true that how do we look at it in the context of uh, Delta variant? Delta variant hit us very badly, as you very rightly said. And we have learned a lot of lessons. And as you rightly said, mid-course correction was a constant phenomenon. And even today, it is a constant phenomenon. So there has been a lot of discussion. India has three advantages with, with us. One is that vaccination is going on as per planned roadmap. So, uh, in fact, on the face of it, it may look, but prioritization was done all over the world. Every country had prioritization, and that's what we did. We knew that by end of July, we will administer 50 crores. On 7th of August, we administered the 50th crore dose. So, it was not bad. In October, we had expected that we will administer 100 crores. And we are there. It may be a delay of two or three weeks, but that's all right. I think we have to accept that. So it is, we knew exactly the vaccine pipeline on one side, but simultaneously this massive second wave has affected 60 to 70% of our population which got naturally infected. Now this gives us on one side, we have suffered, but on the other side in the long run, now it has provided a double protection on us. Yeah. We have vaccine and on top of that, a natural infection. Natural infection provides very robust uh, uh, protection, protective. So we have a double barrel of protection, which neither Israel had nor the uh, UK had. And plus UK also had another mm. problem. They have a lot of vaccine hesitancy. After 50, 60%, everything got stuck there. And in, in fact, those who are dying or hospitalized are mostly those who were not immunized and then affected by, uh, by Delta variant. And same exactly is true for UK. While our I think Indians are much more intelligent and uh, I, I would say aware population. They have accepted the vaccine, they are moving forward and our social mobilization campaign has been very proactive. Chandrakant has been part of the polio program also. We knew how difficult it was. Yeah. World yeah. Cup, we will never be able to cover the uh, 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 polio uh, transmission interruption. But we did it and that has been used. So in fact, I would ask all of you who are present that in the social media, are you still seeing too many of fake information or misinformation or rumors? Very little because it has been proactively addressed. You are right that second doser is very yes. important. Last three weeks, if you That's look at it, yeah, the second doser has increased. Today's second dose is almost one and a half times as compared to first dose. So there has been a special effort for last three months now. Special campaigns and camps are being organized for second. So that is a very important concern. But I also agree that last mile, last 20, 30% coverage will be not a cakewalk. There are many more milestones. We have to really work in a very proactive manner. We'll have to have person to person marking. And here, ASHAs have done a great job. The health workers, Pushas have done a great job. If you go to an ASHA, you ask them if they do vaccine in your she will take you to those six houses and she will tell you. So a very good mapping has been done. And that is why this confidence that I think we should be able to do it. And the example, the, the, the bright and silver lining is that many of the states have already done 100%. Kerala has done almost 95% plus first doser. Now these are very yes. good indications and we have to build on this. But booster is not... I, your, basic question sure. that uh, Dr. Lahiria, just not, not anytime soon in India. Dr. Lahiria, um, the, the next, I mean, logical question is that with this rapid pace of vaccination, considering that you've had a large number of the population already exposed to the Delta Plus, can we then hope to avoid a third wave altogether? What we need to remember that uh, a uh, third national wave is very unlikely in the country for the two factors. One, we have a, a large zero positivity, 67.6% .6 of India's population on 25th of June. The midpoint for fourth nationwide zero survey was, had antibodies. And since then, the vaccination pace has really increased. 
and we know scientifically that uh, with the natural infection followed by even a single shot of vaccine provide a fairly decent and long term protection so in these two backgrounds it's unlikely that india would have a large third wave but we cannot rule out uh, state specific and sub uh, sub state or district level uh, third wave so we should not be concerned about wave what we, should be our approach that are we protected enough are we doing those intervention which can reduce the impact of subsequent wave and that is vaccination alongside as we know that we are in the festive season which is really long festive season till next uh, 12 weeks so we should be cautious at individual level people should be adhering to mask adherence if we do as a like a government does its part on increasing vaccination individual does its part of adhering to covid appropriate behavior it is really something which uh, uh, we can uh, fairly bypass and we can be fairly confident that there would not be a wider subsequent wave now it's sub it's immaterial uh, whether this would be a large one or a small one but it's all in all likelihood it will be a minor rise we can see and uh, that we should be prepared for All right, that's a great note to end this discussion. I'm completely out of time, but thank you so much, Dr. Sunila Garg, Dr. Lahadia, and of course, Dr. Rora, for joining us on the eve of what is uh, a very big day, promises to be a big day, and we promise you to get to you with the biggest voices on this all day tomorrow on ET Now. Thank you so much.